I want to start this video off by saying that our guts, good bacteria, bad bacteria, our entire biome in our guts is a very, very complex thing. And we're only starting to scratch the surface on what it can do for us and what we can do for it. But in this video, I want to help clear some things up. I want to explain how gut bacteria plays a big role in our immune system and how by taking care of our guts, we truly can reduce the instances of how often we get sick and how we can truly help our bodies be in the best position possible to get in amazing shape, but also feel absolutely great. So let's talk about what is happening in the gut for a second. Okay, we have a plethora of different bacteria in the gut, usually falling under two categories, the lactobacillus group and we have the bifidobacteria group. Now within these two groups, there are thousands of different subspecies of bacteria that do a multitude of different things within the body. But at the end of the day, they really comprise our immune system and they comprise the ability to digest and break down food. In fact, I'm not sure if you knew this, but 80% of our immune system is actually in our guts. Now, it may not have always been this way, but we're evolving as a species to where bacteria and overall health of our gut biome is super critical to our immune system. And it's not just a matter of good bacteria fighting with bad bacteria going to war. It's a matter of how this good bacteria and bad bacteria reacts with a very specific cell in our intestinal tract. These are called epithelial cells. Now the epithelial cells normally are thought of as the cells that start to absorb food and help facilitate the breakdown and absorption. And they do. But a bigger piece of what they do as far as the immune system is concerned is they actually interact with bacteria to modulate our immune system and modulate different responses. So it's actually the effect of the bacteria on the cells that really is the importance of what happens with our immune system and our gut. So so many of us think that it's just a simple balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria. And this is an all out war. And if we have more good bacteria, then our immune system is great. And if we have less bad bacteria, our immune system is great. But it's really quite different. In fact, I'm gonna explain a little bit more of how these bacteria interact with the epithelial cells right now. You see, when the epithelial cells are acted upon by more good bacteria, they're able to produce more of the mucus that actually protects our gut. We may not think anything of it, but that mucus is a very powerful barrier between bad bacteria, bad viruses, other pathogens, and our overall life and well-being. Without that mucosal layer, everything would be able to flow right into our bloodstream and we'd get sick a lot more often. Now, a lot of people don't realize also that the epithelial cells modulate our immune system. They can modulate the production of cytokines and chemokines, which play a huge role in inflammation. So we need to have the right balance of inflammation in our bodies in order to fight illnesses off, but also in order to be able to be healthy in the first place. Too much inflammation, we'll feel sick. Too little inflammation, we'll get sick. So it's a healthy balance there. And believe it or not, that bacteria can dictate what those epithelial cells do in the way of inflammation. Now those epithelial cells also help modulate the production of antigens. So when we're talking about being able to prevent ourselves from getting sick, or a response to a certain food, or even an allergic reaction to a specific food, these antigens can play a big, big role. So again, if we don't have that good bacteria there, then the bad bacteria isn't there to stimulate these epithelial cells to work their magic. So on that note, let's talk a little bit about pathogens, the bad bacteria. Let's talk about gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria so you have an understanding there too. See, a pathogen is really just something that's not supposed to be there. But quite honestly, we have pathogens that live in our bodies all the time. It's not like we're just consuming them and they're exogenous and we always have to fight them off. A lot of them just live in our bodies. A lot of people think that in order for a pathogen to affect us, our immune system has to be compromised. We have to be immunocompromised or immunosuppressed. That's not quite how it works. You see, pathogens are affecting us day in and day out. Remember how I talked about consumption of just viruses and consumptions of pathogens in the first place? Well, it's always happening. Every time you take a bite of food, every time you take a bite of lettuce or anything, you're ingesting some pathogens and your immune system's job is to fight those things off. But again, we don't have to be immunosuppressed to actually be affected by them. We're still gonna have a result in terms of how our immune system reacts regardless. And these pathogens are unique in that they're designed to mutate and change so that they can actually penetrate our bodies a little bit easier. So it takes a nice balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria in order to ultimately fight that off. Now, when we look at that, we start looking at what is called gram-negative and gram-positive bacterias. Gram-negatives are usually thought of as the bad bacteria, and gram-positives are usually thought of as the good bacteria. It probably has something to do with the fact that one is called negative and one is called positive, but that's really nothing to do with it. 
That's just kind of how the structure is. You see, a gram-negative bacteria has a thinner membrane. It's a thinner membrane, but it's a lot stronger. So it makes it very, very antibiotic resistant. So it's kind of been dubbed the bad bacteria just because it's antibiotic resistant. I think we have this common thought that if it's hard for an antibiotic to fight something off, it's automatically bad. But the fact of the matter is, is that these gram-negative bacteria aren't always bad. We have to have a balance of them. E. coli is a great example. We have E. coli sitting in our gut naturally. It's totally supposed to be there. It's a part of its job to actually digest and facilitate the right production and excretion of food waste. But if we have too much, it ends up getting us sick. Or if we have the wrong kind of E. coli, it ends up getting us sick. So it's a nice balance there. Then we have gram-positive bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria have a thicker membrane. In fact, it's 20 times thicker than that of the gram-negative, but it's a little bit easier to penetrate. Now, gram-positive can also be bad, so it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's a matter of being able to feed the stallion, starve the pony, whenever possible. So, for example, since gram-negative bacteria don't die as easily, it's very, very easy for gram-negative to overtake the gram-positive. It doesn't mean that you have more bad bacteria, but it means that you have more of one classification, which means you don't have the wide spectrum of immune support that you need to defend from different organisms, different pathogens, and different illnesses. So you're probably wondering at this point, how do you support more of the gram-positive, or how do you support more of the gram-negative? How do you really start taking the right steps to make sure you have a plethora of good bacteria that's in balance? Well, one of the key things that I highly recommend is limiting the use of hand sanitizer. This is something that I've discovered recently. I used to notice that whenever I used hand sanitizer, I would get sick more frequently. The thing is, is that the active ingredients in hand sanitizer, although they have the ability to kill off a lot of the bacteria and viruses that are making contact with your hands, they also have the ability to kill off a lot of the gram-negative bacteria. That's the bacteria that a lot of antibiotics that you're taking orally can't kill off. So you can see how we're really disrupting the gut biome tremendously by using a lot of hand sanitizer. It doesn't just kill off what's on your hands. It absorbs straight into your intestinal tract and it kills off the bacteria that's in your gut as well, totally throwing off your immune system. But then there's talk about how the use of probiotics can help the production of good bacteria and also help our body's immune system. And quite honestly, there's some truth to that. There was one study that was published in the European Journal of Nutrition. It was a 12-week study that took a look at two different groups. It took a look at a placebo group and a group that consumed probiotics. And over the 12-week period, they measured their resistance to illness, but also the length of a cold if they did get sick. So we looked at the common cold. What they found was that the group that took the probiotics ended up having an instance of getting sick that was significantly less. Okay? The placebo group, 67% contracted an illness, whereas 55% of the probiotic group contracted an illness. But when it came down to the length of the cold is where it was really fascinating. We ended up going down from 8.6 days in the placebo group to 6.2 days on average in the probiotic group. So it was really, really powerful when it came down to fighting off illness that was already present. Now the hard part of probiotics is you're usually not absorbing them. So you have to focus on getting the right kind of foods that support that bacteria production, but also focusing on the prebiotic foods that grow your existing gut bacteria. Now even though we only scratch the surface of probiotics, inflammation, the immune system, and our gut bacteria, I hope that this gave you an entryway into how important our guts are when it comes down to our immune system. I'm going to do some more videos that dive a little bit deeper into specific kinds of bacteria, do the other videos that dive into how our immune system plays roles in our fitness and in our body composition. But until then, I'll see you in the next video.